Hey guys, Mr. here again for another video today, and we are back with our Houston Vikings franchise mode. And uh, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't think it'll be too long, though, because I really just plan on finishing up the series, or not the series, finishing up the uh, season in this episode. But I do want to go to free agency really quickly because I want to sign um, a goaltender. <clears throat> Uh, just just because, really. Uh, just because we are going to be making a trade, and it involves a goaltender. So we're just going to sign uh, Matson to a one-year deal. Give him the max two-way deal as well. So we'll sign him for one year, and hopefully he accepts before the deadline. Which, if he doesn't, that could be extremely bad. Because, you know, it's still like for him to accept Kevin BX a waiver claim. No thank you, I'll decline that. Um, thanks though. So we lost to LA, which is good, but we're still in uh, sixth place, so we there. Okay, so we signed Matson. Now it is time to go and make the trade. Uh, this trade obviously involves a goaltender. I wouldn't be signing that goalie for literally no reason, so uh, we are going to send away Eunice Corpusalo, who is pretty good, obviously, um, but I'm really banking on Uko Pekalukkanen to be our goalie of the future, and our prospects aren't ready, neither is our goalie, so you know what? I decided that Corpusalo will get traded, but uh, we're going to get a prospect, a big prospect in return, so we're going to try the trade in just a second. Now, the main reason why I am sending Corpus Allo away is because he is expiring this year, and I feel as though I can get a much um, or much better from a trade out of him instead of uh, instead of a uh, or, or instead of him being an RFA going to free agency. Plus, I don't want to pay him that much, so we're gonna add Corpus Solo to it. Then we're also gonna have to add a few draft picks as well. We're gonna have to add. A second round pick in 2022. Um, yep, and then we're also gonna have to add the uh, LA third round. No, LA third round pick that we have. Well, and the Buffalo third round pick that we have. So we'll add those two. Then we also need to go to a defenseman. Uh, is an unsigned prospect by the name of Olafson. He doesn't look too great. He is a high seventh. Torsten Olofsson, so you know, I can't really see him getting that good, but we're going to go to Calgary, and we're going to acquire someone that is on the block, um, and he looks pretty decent, uh, it'll be someone by the name of Philip Zadina, who you never know could be a great first liner for us in the future, so we're going to try to acquire him. Now, the value is pretty even, I'd say they're still more value on the side of Philip Zadina. Now, I mean, I don't know why they would, don't want Corpus Salo. I mean, I know they're a good team, but I feel like they'd want that number one goalie of the future, and Corpus Salo could do that. Uh, they don't want the second, but they want the two thirds, and then they don't want a loss in either, but they want to give up Zadina, so we're going to try it. So, proposed trade, trade rejected. Um, we're probably going to have to use a higher draft pick instead of Torsten Olofsson, although, you know what, let's go back to Olofsson, we'll add him into it again, and instead of the one of the third round picks, yeah, man, I screwed that up, All right, so let's go back to the defenseman, uh, we'll put Olofsson back in the trade, unsigned, there we go, and we'll go back to draft picks as well, so we'll sort of by potential, let's see, so instead of the third from um, the LA Kings. How about the third from the Rangers? Uh, so I mean, it's a little bit more value, but maybe this pushes it through. So we'll try this instead. Proposed trade. Trade rejected. We need just a touch. So, you know what? We'll take a loss and out. We'll probably have to use um, a fourth rounder, maybe. Let's actually sort of buy the round. We'll add a fourth rounder and see if that will make it any better. Uh, we'll try the Montreal fourth. Proposed trade. Trade rejected still. All right. So uh, uh, I'm going to be very happy, though, with acquiring a player like this. Really? I mean, really? 
I could use Montreal's first next year. It has zero value, basically. What if we were to get rid of the two-thirds and we use the first instead? So Montreal's first next year, uh, our second in a couple of years, and Corbisalo for Philip Zadina, that would go through. Could we also get, like, a fourth-round pick from them? Uh, just out of curiosity, let's see. Uh, if we sort it, but I don't know. Here, let's try a th we'll, we'll try a third rounder proposed trade. Okay, we'll just a touch. I mean, it is fine. I think we'll just go with the fourth then. Let's see. Can we get a fourth from them in next year's draft? Really trade rejected. All right. Well, we'll just have to do this then. So Eunice Corposalo, a second round pick in 2022, and uh, the Montreal Canadiens 2020 first round pick to the Calgary Flames in exchange for Philip Zadina. Yes, sir. There we go. Trade accepted. So, uh, yeah, that's a it's a pretty big trade. It's actually probably uh, potentially one of the biggest trades that we will have uh, in this sim, I guess, in this series at least. So we'll call Matson up. He will be the backup. Um, yeah, so he'll be the backup. And uh, let's go edit lines. I don't want to do best lines because I like the way I have it currently. So let's put in um, Matson. We'll let him start a few games, I guess. We'll just switch this around, let him start a few games. All right. And then, yeah, all right. So that although down in the AHL, I do want to make sure that Zadina will be in here. So we'll take out... Uh, Let's take out who? I don't know who to take out. You know, what? you know what? Let's do best lines first. Let's see. Where is... Is he still scratched? or did, He wasn't in the CHL when I traded for him. Is he in the CHL now? Uh, wait, is he in the NHL? Okay, wait. I'm, confu I'm confused. One second. Let's go to scratch players in the NHL. Oh, he's in the AHL, or NHL, sorry. All right, so let's um, send him down then. Yep, because I don't want him playing in the NHL now. So we'll send down Philip Zadina. Uh, actually, I can't. Well, that's unfortunate. Can we send down Cobb then? No, I can't. He'd also be a waiver. Uh, eligible player, what about a loss, or not a loss, and uh, DJ Seppi, sorry, no, all right, well, Philip Zadina will have to play in the NHL then, um, even though we aren't over the cap, he's going to have to play, which is stupid, to be honest, so, uh, you know what, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to get him to play too, let's take out Smith Pelly, and let's put in Zadina, we'll give him some ice time in the NHL. Why not? Um, yeah, we'll do that. Barber, he's listed as a depth for it. All right, so you know what? Zadina gets to play second line for uh, the rest of the season. Hasn't played in the NA NHL yet. I mean, I'd rather him not be qualified as a rookie this year. But uh, I don't know. How many games do we have left? We'll see. It's under 25, and that's great. That is. We only have uh, 21 games left, so he uh, technically isn't necessarily uh, called or eligible eligible this year, which is good. So let's sim to the deadline. We'll see how we do against Arizona. I really hope we start losing, to be honest. I mean, Corbisala wasn't doing great uh, in general, but like I said, hopefully we could start losing. Gabriel Carlson is fully healed to play in the NHL again, so we'll put him back into the lineup. Uh, oh, wait, no, okay, yeah, I already had him in. Yeah, I forgot about that. Never mind then. Uh, but, yeah, let's go to the deadline, and we'll see what other trades have been made. Holy frig, our AHL team is good. Too bad I can't send uh, Zadina down there. I feel like that would make it even better. But, you know what, whatever, it's fine. Actually, yeah, I did notice something, though, about the AHL lines. I saw Vanainen on the bottom line, and I don't want Vanainen on the bottom line. Um, yeah, all right, so Kapanen, Debrinkat, Debrusque. You know what, that is fine, but I want Vanayden, Rice, and Shorstrom to play together, even though they aren't that great. You know what, I, I still, I want Debrinkat on the right wing. I want Vanayden first line center. 
And we'll go with Reese as our second center, I guess. And sure, we'll try that. Hopefully, everybody's okay with the ice time. Well, we'll switch Wickman and Paquette around just because Paquette is listed as a fourth liner. Okay, yeah, we're not, you know what? We're just going to have to do that defensively. Still good, I think. All right. Scratch players. Other than Nick Hag, I believe we don't have anybody scratched. Uh, but he's still injured. When he will come back, we'll probably take out... Uh, who would we take out, actually? Uh, Miller, probably. Yeah, definitely Miller. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to change those lines up again because I did realize that he was down there. Holy frig, Hershey is bad. 10, 48, and 4. That is terrible. Oh, my God. That is... That's basically the opposite record of ours. Like... We have 42 wins, they have 48 losses, we have 18 regulation losses, they have 10 wins, and 4-4. Four and four. That is a terrible record, oh my god. That is actually disgusting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's go and see uh, what kind of trades have been made. Just out of curiosity, I, it's not that big of a deal. So, Paul Stasny was dealt to the Minnesota Wild, and, and Carl Gunnarsson as well for a first-round pick in 2019 and a sixth round pick in 2019 auto acquired zach smith no auto sorry auto acquired a second round pick from arizona for zach smith i didn't think zach smith would be worth a second round pick montreal acquired colin wilson and kevin connaughton for uh, a second round pick in this upcoming draft and jeremy gregoire uh, the islanders acquired a fifth from toronto for mark barbario and a seventh Boston acquired a first uh, and a fifth from L.A. for Brandon Carlo. All right. There's our trade for Zadina. Anaheim acquired Cronwall and is that Mike Richards? I would assume so. Uh, Mike Richards and a 2019 fifth for a second and sixth round pick. All right. Nashville acquired a third and a fifth for Jakob Kindle, a fifth and Mazonic. And Kyle Turris was dealt, Kyle Turris and Brendan Smith were both dealt to the New Jersey Devils in exchange for a first and a third. Uh, on New York also uh, traded away Carl Alsner back to the Washington Cas Ca <laughs> Capitals for and Jesper Faust. All right, big trades from New York. Um, okay, the New Jersey Devils also acquired Anders Lee from the New York Islanders for a second, a prospect, and a seventh. Ryan Ellis went to Winnipeg for a first and Jet Wu. And obviously there's our pick as well from Josh Manson, or our trade, sorry, for Josh Manson. And also um, Henrik Sedin being traded from us as well. So quite a few big trades, that is for sure. Now, I mean, I don't think we're going to make another trade, but I do want to show you guys something really quickly. When I was looking off screen, we're going to look at the trade block. Uh, or no, not our trading block. I want to look at other other teams' trading blocks because it is actually crazy. Um, two players I saw on the block couldn't honestly believe it, but I need to find it. I wrote it down somewhere. I know one of them is on Boston. Uh, okay, okay, so Boston and Nashville. So let's go check Boston. Boston has Charlie McAvoy on the block. I mean, I don't have the assets to give up for Charlie McAvoy. And the main reason why I got rid of Corpus Allo is because we had to re-sign him at the end of this year. And again, it's the same thing for McAvoy. I mean, I'd love to get him, but he could be a free agent anyways. Man, you never know. And then also, let's go down to Nashville. Nashville has Ryan Johansson, or had Ryan Johansson on the block. Uh, let's see, is he still there? Because I know he was there. Uh, let's see, is he still there? Ryan Johansson, yes, he is still on the block. He is also on the last year of his deal, so you never know. He could go to free agency. They are pretty good for cap, so I mean, I doubt they he would go to free agency, but you never know. Um, although... Really quickly, guys, since we are at the deadline, I do want to do something. So I have not officially 
done any uh, trades in the middle of the season. Or not trades, sorry. Any uh, signings in the middle of the season yet. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do it with uh, Jake DeBrusque. We're going to offer a contract extension. Um, actually, I shouldn't do it like this. I should see which players actually want one first. Uh, so extension. Steven Johns doesn't want one. Uh, let's see. Let's just sort it by that. So Gabriel Carlson does. All right. Well, we'll offer him a contract extension. He doesn't want a lot of money, which isn't bad. So you know what? I'll, I think I'll give him $2.2 million over the next three seasons, which isn't bad. We are going to be very low on the cap this upcoming season. And then is that it? I thought I could. Okay, no, that's the main roster. Let's go down into the system as well because Alex DeBrincat. Yeah, I knew Alex DeBrincat wanted one as well. Pretty expensive, but you know what? It's fine. It's Alex DeBrincat. So I think I'll go three years at three point eight million for Alex DeBrincat. Jacob DeBrusque as well. I think we will offer a contract. He wants a lot of money, so I think we'll go. 3.8 for three years. Yeah, we'll try that. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen also wants a new contract. He still wants a two-way deal. So you know what? We'll sign him on a max two-way deal uh, for three years as well. Lucas Johansson wants another deal as well. Uh, again, let's do seven. Yeah, we'll give him what he wants for three years on another two-way deal. So that is not bad. Um Everybody else, though, I don't know if I'm going to sign them. Let's go check goalies. I mean, I know Ranta needs to be re-signed at the end of this season. Don't know if I'm going to. Well, I'm sure I will, but uh, he might be on another max deal, and I just don't know. I don't know if I want to do that yet or not, so we'll wait and see. But there we go. Those are the first contract extensions extensions. Sorry. <laughs> Those are the first contract extensions that I have done uh, in this series, so actually in any series, this I've just never done the mid-season, so I think that's cool. I really think that is a nice feature into the game, especially since it is a real thing. So uh, let's simulate up to the end of the season. So Gabriel Carlson accepts the deal. Jake DeBrus accepts the deal. Kasperi Kapanen accepts the deal. Alex Dabrinkat accepts the deal. And Lucas Johansson accepts the deal. So five of our main prospects that I did, or the five prospects I did offer contracts to, all um, did come back, which is really good. Uh, also, I mean, maybe not Carlson. I mean, Carlson's not really prospect anymore. But still, you know what I mean. So um, Matt Benning is ready to play uh, in the NHL, or ready to play. He's back from his injury, so we'll give him, um, we'll give him uh, top line ice time again with Gabriel Carlson. Again, I'd still like to see more growth out of Carlson. He's got plenty of time to grow, but uh, still, it's kind of worrying. Hishier finally has got past the 81 overall mark, which is good. Only an 82. Is that an ice time? Or No, I think that's actual growth. I don't think that's an ice time thing. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my, I am extremely sorry about that, guys. Um, <laughs> that was the smoke alarm my parents are making suffer upstairs. And um, yeah, you know what? I don't even care. I'm just, I, I muted my mic. <laughs> Whatever, I, you know what, screw it, we're just gonna keep it in, why the hell not, uh, do we have anybody that is eligible to, or that is ours to play, you know what, we don't, I'm just gonna put Gunnarsson in, I'm not even gonna sign anybody else, well, I don't think I can anymore at this point, oh, that was stupid, <laughs> what is wrong with my family, as, uh, who? Who went down? Scott Lawton. Scott Lawton went down. Do we have anybody scratch? Smith Pelly, yeah. So Smith Pelly can come in. 
he will play uh, he will play fourth line still. <laughs> Reed Boucher will get the second line time. I am extremely sorry about that, guys. That was honestly brutal. Philip Zadina has three points in ten games. Not too bad. He is only a 72 overall. So, you know, uh, Gustav Postler is ready to go back in the AHL as well. So, good thing that wasn't a very long injury. We don't have to play Gunnarsson for that long, which is good. Postler, you know what, whatever. We're just going to keep him in. So, <sighs> I still cannot believe that. That was actually stupid. I'm literally recording. I don't know how they managed to get the smoke alarm to go off. I'm literally, like, they're literally making pizza. So, I don't know what the hell they were doing, but whatever. Uh, Matt Molson has been injured until April 21st, so if we were a playoff team, he would be missing probably the first round. Scott Lawn back? Yes, he is. All right, well, he will get the second line time again. I didn't even get to see that notification uh, at his scouting assignment as well. All right, let's go to Russia forwards for three weeks. I'll do Russia both forwards and defense. Yep, continue. I already put Lund back in. So looking like we may finish with 40 losses. So uh, I hopefully we do. Can we have 40 losses? We won't. Um, I thought we made the playoffs for a second. I saw the record at 0-0. Zero and zero. I'm like, wait, no. There's no way we made the playoffs. All right. It's cool, though. So um, I mean, overall, not a great record again, which is good. That is promising. Maybe that's another top 10 pick. That would be really nice. 69 points for uh, David Pasternak, who was the best player on our team. Again, I believe that is two years in a row, which makes sense. You would expect him to be the best. Uh, I'm going to advance a day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Playoffs have started. All right. I just want to make sure that uh, uh, everything was ready to go so I could see the entire stats. So let's check. The entire league. We finished second in our division, which isn't too bad. Columbus won the President's Trophy. Let's see. Let's go all the way down. Where are we? We are bottom six in the league. So we did finish bottom six. Damn, if Nashville would have had one more win, or if we would have had one less extra time loss, we would have just lost in regulation. We would have been uh, bottom five, which you never know. That could make a difference for Nashville. So... That kind of sucks, but still, that is another good pick, hopefully. Hopefully, this draft class is decent. Playoff favorites are Columbus, as you would expect. So let's check these stats. Uh, 69 points for David Pasternak. 59 for Nico Hischer, and he's back down to an 81. Can't get him to grow anymore for some reason, although he is a really good forward so far. He's two 59-point seasons, which is really good. Uh, hopefully we'll do even better throughout the or his career. Tyler Ennis had 57 points. He did really good. Uh, Connor Brown had 57. He also did good. Burakovsky only had 52. I'm playing on the first line with Hishir and Pasternak. Don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I mean, he's still doing good, and he's not on a huge contract, to be fair. So I'll definitely keep him for now. But, like, he's getting paid this almost the same amount as Jake DeBrusque, and he's four overall higher, so I do like that. That is one shitty part about DeBrusque's contract, that's for sure. But after 52 points from Burakovsky, nobody did as good after that. Pontus Aberg had 29. Lund had 28 in 68 games. He did miss a few out. He did miss a few out. He did miss a few, obviously. Matt Molson didn't do too great. Reed Boucher didn't do too great. Cobb didn't do... Actually, Cobb didn't do too bad. 22 points in 41 games. Matt Benning was our best defenseman. 21 points in 76 games isn't too bad. Riley Barber only played 33 games and had 15 points. That's not too bad either. Where is Carlson? Carlson only had 7 points, and he played 60 games. Pulock had 6 points in 29 games. Zadina had 4 points in 21 games. All right. Olofsson only had 2 points. In the 33 games he was substituted in. Uh, goalies. Oh, Matson played 21 games. Apparently Matson uh, was... Oh, I must have auto-rotate goalies off. Although he did better than what Ranta was doing. So why? I don't know. 75 overall compared to an 83 overall. Whatever. Okay, game rookie skaters. 
Philip Zadina is there, even though I'm pretty sure he shouldn't be because he didn't play 25 games, which I'm pretty sure that's the thing. Uh, you know what? Let's go uh, forwards, though. Let's check the entire league really quickly. Uh, the entire league. Let's see who did the best. Alex Ovechkin with 108 points. Nicholas Backstrom with 105 points. Holy shit. Ovi had 64 goals. What the fuck? <laughs> And then the next closest to him was 51 goals, Starisanko. Wow. All right. Very interesting. Sidney Crosby had 92 points. Patrick Kane had 91. Phil Kessel had 91. Brandon Sod had 85, and he's up to an 89. Wow. Uh, Evgeny Malkin had 94. Nazem Kadri had 84. Wow. Good season from Kadri. Another 30 goal season for him. Tarasenko, just under point per game. Getzlaff, Kucherov, all right. Let's see, who do, who had a lot of goals this year? Uh, just out of curiosity. Like, who scored a lot that usually doesn't score a lot? Um, Brandon Saad almost had a 40-goal season. Uh, Nazem Kadri, obviously. Um, let's see, anybody else? Thomas Vanek had 32 goals. Uh, Line only had 32 goals. So, same problem I'm having in the Winnipeg Jets series. Uh, Anton Slepyshev had 30 goals. Barkov had 30 goals. Interesting. Uh, Anthony Mantha almost had 30 goals. Damn. Let's see. Who had the most assists? I believe it was Backstrom. Yeah. Backstrom would have been a point-per-game player just in assist. Backstrom, I think, is the ultimate playmaker. Like, what the fuck? He is so good. Um, all right. Well, who had the best plus-minus? I would assume Nicholas Backstrom. Yeah, and then OV, and then Oshi. Oh, she didn't have that great of a season, to be fair, though. Only uh, 69 points for him playing with Ovi and Backstrom. You would think he would get at least, like, 80, but uh, nope. Let's go check defensemen, though. Uh, Eric Carlson with 79 points, almost a point-per-game defenseman. Drew Doughty with 73. Morgan Riley with 71. I think most goals will go to Carlson. Brent Burns also wasn't too far behind, though. Uh, interesting. Most assists goes to Drew Doughty at 61. Petrangelo at 59 assists, so he did good. Uh, let's see. Best. Nope, not points. Let's go. Best plus minus. A plus 42 for Zach Wierenski and a plus 42 for Seth Jones. That is probably their top pairing. And Vatnin, who is a Montreal Canadian. And Gardner. Interesting. Morgan Riley and uh, Jake Gardner are probably playing together as well. If maybe sides have to be honest. Interesting. Alec Martinez is a Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, interesting. How high is Ristolainen? Ristolainen is a 90 overall. Holy Johnny Boy Chucks, a Toronto Maple Leaf. Please don't ever take on that contract, guys. Thanks. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go check goalies. Let's see. Uh, Sergey Bobrovsky had a 51 win season. Well, <laughs> who most games played was Pecorine. He did not do very good, though. Uh, yeah, he didn't do good at all. Let's see. So most wins to Bobrovsky. Uh, who had the least losses as a starter? Uh, let's see. As a starter, who had the least losses? I would say um, Craig Anderson, who's a Winnipeg Jet. All right. So I... Do you want to go back to wins for a sec? I saw something. Yeah, oh no, it was losses. Henrik Lundqvist had the most losses in the NHL as a starter at 37. That is freaking crazy, um, but okay. Who had the best save percentage? Matt Murray with a 933 save percentage, up to an 88 overall, and was only letting in two goals per game. So I'm assuming Matt Murray will be the Vesna winner this year. Let's check the rookie skaters. We'll see who did the best. Uh, Nolan Patrick up to an 84. Ugh. Man, if only if only uh, Nico Hischier would start growing. Uh, Tyson Jost with 42 and Matthew Barzil with 32. Interesting. Most goals for a rookie uh, is Tyson Jost. Yep. Most assists for a rookie is Nolan Patrick. Yep. Best plus minus, probably Patrick. Nope, actually Carl Dahlstrom. 
Uh, interesting most penalty minutes as well. No, never mind. Scott Kosmachuk, 25-year-old rookie. Let's go back to points. Is Philip Zadina here? Is he? I mean, he sh yeah, he is. That's boring. That's kind of upsetting. Even I think he's still technically counted as a rookie, though, in the next season because he only played 21 games. Like, Vince Dunn is there as well, and he played th six games. Like, I don't think that is right because I think you can play a max of, or I thought at least you could play a max of uh, 25 games, but oh, whatever, okay. Let's see, who was the best goalie? Uh, or the best rookie goalie, sorry. Our most wins goes to uh, Garrett Sparks and uh, Dennis Godla. Neither of them had great stats, though. Evan Fitzpatrick or Malcolm Subban could take the Calder, but I'm assuming it will go to Nolan Patrick. So, very interesting. Those are basically all the stats I brought this episode on. An extra, t or I brought this episode long, an extra 10 minutes long just by looking at the stats. I don't know how I do it, but whatever, guys. That is going to be it from me. Hopefully, you all did enjoy. Uh, and uh, yeah, in the next episode, we'll have the draft. We'll see how we do. We'll have to check the AHL stats as well in the next episode because I know we are in the playoffs in the AHL. We'll also do that in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching once again. Hopefully you all did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.